In this video, we will see band model of a semiconductor material in specific for silicon. Atomic number of silicon is 14. Assuming it is an isolated silicon atom, its electron configuration is given here. Whereas its inner shell has two available states and two electrons are filling them. And middle shell has eight available states. Eight out of them are filled. And outer shell, which is also called the valence shell, is partially filled in the sense four out of eight states are filled. Practically, silicon is used in crystal form. So let me take this box over here as a silicon crystal where the number of atoms is n and the neighboring atoms distance is r which is, we are going to call it as interatomic distance. Given individual silicon atoms energy levels with in this order 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s and then 3p. How are the energy levels for this silicon crystal of n atoms will be? That's what our target is. We're going to do a hypothetical experiment to understand this energy levels in a crystalline silicon. We're going to assume this interatomic distance is variable and it is in our control. And first we will assume this interatomic distance to be very high in such a way that each silicon atom in this crystal is isolated silicon atom. Let me take the x-axis to be the interatomic distance r and the y-axis the electron energy. Let me assume that the interatomic distance is so high such that the each individual silicon atom doesn't feel the presence of the other silicon atoms, which means they are literally isolated. Let me take the energy levels of each individual subshells. The first one, 1s, for all the n silicon atoms will be exactly same because it's not an interacting system. And for 2s, let me take it here and 2p here and 3s and 3p. We know that as we go up, the electron energy actually increases. In this case, for 1s level, we have 2n available states because we are talking about n silicon atoms where 2n states are filled. 2s also the same situation, 2n out of 2n are filled. For 2p, 6n out of 6n are filled. And 3s, 2n out of 2n. But for 3p, we have 2n out of 6n. If you decrease the interatomic distance further, assuming the silicon atoms are coming closer, but still, let me take that the neighboring silicon atoms don't feel the presence of their neighbors. So the energy levels basically would remain the same. They don't change. So let me assume at some interatomic distance that each silicon atom would actually feel the presence of the others. So at that point, the whole system of this N silicon atoms would become an interacting system. So when it is an interacting system, Pauli's exclusive principle comes into picture. What it states is in an interacting system, no two electrons can have the same quantum state, which means now in 3p, we have a lot of electrons, 2n electrons. All of them were so far having the same energy level. Now it cannot have. So what happens is the energy levels will start splitting and similarly for 3s, but 2p, 2s and 1p are so close to the nucleus and they don't feel the presence of the other atoms to be disturbing their energy levels. Whereas for 3p and 3s, they split. And if we decrease the interatomic distance further, they come and merge together. So the energy levels will be going this way. And if we decrease the interatomic distance further, because they merge, they again split and they go this way. Where in this experiment, these 2p, 2s and 1s, as they are very close to nucleus, they don't get impacted. But if we can decrease the interatomic distance even further, the 2p and 2s would actually start splitting, but that's not our interest here. And 1s, if we can hypothetically decrease, it'll split somewhere here. But the interatomic distance is not something that we can practically have so less. Because two atoms, when you try to bring them together, silicon atoms, they tend to be attractive because their valence shells are not completely filled. Whereas if you take it even closer, the nuclear forces will repel them. 
So basically, there is an equilibrium distance at which the two silicon atoms or all the silicon atoms will be. In the sense, we need to first find out what is the equilibrium distance at which the crystal is actually formed. So in order to know that, we need to assume what is the temperature. So I'm taking it to be zero Kelvin because the intradomic distance depends on temperature. So at t equals to zero Kelvin, the intradomic distance for silicon would be somewhere here. In that case, we have this energy range over which we have this energy levels spread across. And in this band also, there are energy levels spread across. These energy levels that are spread, we'll call them as band, even though the energy levels are discrete, because there are so many energy levels in a small electron energy range, we'll call them bands. And before we go into detail of that, we need to understand the three categories of here. If you see the first category before they actually merge and after they split, here we have six N states out of which two N are filled. And for the bottom one, we have two N out of which two N are filled. Whereas once it starts merging, and this is the range over which they merge, we have eight N states out of which four N are filled. But in the third case where they split, we have these bands in two categories. One is the band which is completely filled with all the electrons. The bottom one where four N states are available out of which four N electrons are filling them. And the top one where four N states are present out of which zero electrons are filling them. And there is an energy range in the middle over which there are no energy levels at all. This energy range is called the energy gap. So let me project this onto the y-axis to get the structure. Now if I can draw this picture, this range of energy levels, we call this as conduction band. And this range of energy levels here is called valence band. And the difference between these two bands is actually a energy range over which there are no energy levels at all, which we call the energy band gap and we call this in short form E suffix G and often it is called as forbidden energy gap because electrons are forbidden to come into this region as there are no energy levels at all. So if you are given a silicon crystal like this it can be equivalently drawn in band model as like this where this is the valence band we call this valence band because this energy range is completely filled with the valence electrons that we have here, 4n out of 4n. And this is called the conduction band. And we will see why it is called so when we understand conduction in semiconductors. So this is completely empty. And this axis is actually the electron energy range. And this is the distance across the semiconductor material we are considering. And this gap is the EG that we have just discussed, called the forbidden energy gap. And we are defining a term called EC, which is the bottom edge of the conduction band here. And EV, this is the top edge of the valence band. So we can write EG as EC minus EV. This is a very important parameter. We would be using it a lot in the course. EG, in fact, we can understand from this graph will be temperature dependent because the equilibrium distance that we had here for T equals to zero Kelvin can change when temperature changes. If temperature increases, this energy gap that we had here would decrease because Materials expand as temperature increase, so intradomic distance would increase. So in that case, the energy gap that we see here would be smaller. So that's why when temperature increases, energy band gap would decrease. So let me take example of silicon. How does it change? At T equals to zero Kelvin, the silicon's energy gap is 1.21 electron volt. And at 300 Kelvin, it is 1.1 electron volt. And for germanium, this is 0.74 electron volt. And at 300 Kelvin, this is 0.66 electron volt. So 
a thing to take away from this video is if you're given a crystal like this assuming here silicon crystal it can be represented in band model as like this one a conduction band valence band separated by eg at t equals to zero kelvin the entire valence band is completely filled with electrons and conduction band is completely empty